Hello again. In the previous videos, we have uh, talked about level 1 and level 2 documents and we have learned that level 1 is to establish a QMS and level 2 is to implement the QMS that has been established by the management and we also learned that the level 1 documents are the responsibility of the management and the level 2 documents are the responsibility of the technical supervisory staff uh, and we also understood about how the level 2 documents should be very accurately defined so that your lab uh, workers, uh, the frontline workers will know how to do each activity accurately. Now we will go on to the level 3 documents which are the documents required to maintain the quality management system that has now been effectively implemented through the level 2 documents. So how do you maintain that? And every activity that has been defined, once it is done, it ha the activity has to be captured. The evidence of that activity has to be captured, both the fact that the activity has been done and that it has been done accurately. And therefore, you need some kind of a mechanism to capture this data. So this is the function of the level 3 documents, which comprises of formats and records. We already talked about the difference between formats and records in the earlier videos. And, and formats are live documents in that uh, if the formats need amendment to capture more data, you feel something that you have formatted is not good enough, you can change it. Whereas records are documents on which data has been captured and cannot be amended, but cannot be changed. So once again, level 3 is a recap. Documents are formats and a place to record the data and records a form with the recorded data. It's very evident from the terminology itself. And we let's see once again the differences between formats and records. Format is a document designed to capture the evidence of an activity. Format with the activity captured becomes a record. Formats are live and can be amended. Records are dead and cannot be amended. Formats are approved and issued by the designated authority before, issue, before use. And the records are approved after the activity is over by the designated authority. So let me explain that to you. Suppose you want to capture the quality control results. So there should be a format for it. It has to be designed and it has to be approved by the appropriate authorities and it is issued to the laboratory technician. And the technician after running his QC, the results are documented and it is brought to the technical supervisory staff who signs it after that. So it is the signature comes after that. So approval happens before the before the activity is done and approval happens after the activity is done but in two different uh, ways. So I hope you understand that. Now the question is where are the level 2 documents required? The numbers. The, any activity that needs evidence or records of implementation and the correctness of implementation needs to have a format to capture that activity. The, when are level th 3 documents prepared? We already saw in the last slide level 2. Level 3 documents have to be prepared up front. You technical supervisory staff have to look at the areas where formatting is required, where capture of data is required and this has to be kept designed up front and given to the technicians so that when they do the activity, it is easy for them to put in the numbers or the details of whatever has been done. And how are level 3 documents designed? It is as per the requirement of the activity that needs evidence. These three points are very important. The number of formats required, it ha the when it is to be done, it has to be done before the activity happens. And also, what is the design of a format? It is as per the scope of that activity. So where is it, does it say in the standard that uh, there should be records? If you look at 4.13 of the standard, it is called the control of records, 4.13 control of records. So now we will talk about the minimum records required. Let us look at the standard itself. The standard itself is telling you the minimum requirement. So it says record shall include at least the following and that it starts off from A, B, C, D to you see, see it goes up to V that is 23 different sets of documents and each of these sets of document may require more than one format. 
Okay, these are the formats that are required 23 that standard is specifying 23 areas that the standard is specifying and each area may require more than one format. The medium size lab they will be anywhere between 60 to 70 at least 60 formats that will be required to capture the different kinds of activity. It is a task which is an enormous task but if you really put effort into designing your format and numbering it and indexing it correctly, it is a huge investment because you really are enabling the maintenance of the system that you have just implemented. So, you, we are all uh, required to invest some time and again designing the format is not the responsibility of the technical uh, frontline staff, it is a duty of the supervisory staff. We are, I already told you that it is uh, the, the technical supervisory staff should look into all areas and make the required formats. Uh, we will include a set of uh, 50 or so formats uh, in, a, in a folder in the, on the website. You can look at that and you can see if it is suitable for your use or you can modify that. This is only some kind of an idea that we will give through the formats that are uploaded on this website. And there is another way of deciding the formats that you need. One is by following the standard 4.13 which gives you a very good idea of uh, what are the minimum requirement of uh, formats required. But then you have to look into each of these things and say okay that may require more than one format, this may require maybe four formats and you have to think correctly through it and make the required formats. Another way of doing it is looking going clockwise. This is the example of uh, 5.3 and it is about the management equipment and region management and you are talking about equipment here and as you are writing your quality manual itself you can decide what are the as just like you decide what are the quality system procedures that you have to make you also decide at that point itself along with the management okay this also may require formatting. So let us look at this equipment the, for the general they say I have done a say level 2 document QMS procedure number 12 whichever the, their QMS procedure is and then uh, or it is the QSP, QMS procedure is your QSP, this is another term to use for QMS uh, procedure and then you have acceptance uh, equipment acceptance testing that may also need a procedure, maybe it is included in this and there are also records that you have to keep performance qualification, PQ records which requires formats which you have made up front. Second, equipment calibration and meteorological traceability, again calibration records. So these are the records you are keeping, some of them may not require formatting if the calibration records are coming from outside of your lab, you may not want, you, you may not require to format it but you have to keep the records. So that is uh, then your preventive maintenance and repair, again you need to have formats and the records have to be kept. In the, the second level there will be a QSP here. So this is a very good way to hold all your documents together. You, you say this is your major class of the quality manual and then you say the sub class name and you say what are the reference documents in level 2 and you say what are the level 3. So in the level 3 some of these activity will need formatting like this requires formatting, P, the PQ requires formatting again to understand what are the performance qualification requirement refer to the equipment management module. It is described there exhaustively and then you, uh, you, you can also look at the QC module that also requires, uh, that also um, elaborates on the method uh, evaluation. For PM records, uh, coming back to the records, the PM records may need formatting. Some of the equipments will give you the format for the uh, preventive maintenance. You can use it but and you have to fill it up and store it as records. And equipment adverse incidents reporting, it is it also ne needs a formatting to see which equipment has created whatever adverse incident, it requires formatting there. And then you have to have, a, there is a section called equipment record under 5.3.1.7 actually tells you what are the number of records an equipment should keep and if you follow that, it will you will not miss out on any of the documentation. Again with regard to reagents, QMS and whatever the details of your uh, requirements are and you can put what, whatever the record requirements you can uh, list out in the this column. Uh, storage of reception storage, of course you have to have uh, uh, formats for that. When you are receiving the uh, reagents, you need to verify the purchased item to look at the 
temperature requirements, the expiry, the any breakage and the integrity of the samples, all those need to be form, uh, captured as evidence and therefore this one definitely requires a format. Acceptance testing, lot verification, yes, formats required. Reagent and consumable in inventory management, inventory records have to be there. Reagents instructions for use, maybe you file your kit inserts or maybe if you want extra uh, uh, information you, that you might want to give in your second level documentation, not in your third level. Reagents and uh, consumable adverse incident reporting, yes again formats required. Some of these are listed here, some of these have been left blank for a purpose that you can think about it and decide what uh, needs to be put in, what are your formatting requirements that has to be understood as per the activity. So, this is the second way of deciding on your records. Once again to recap, there are two ways in which you need to decide on uh, making your formats. One is following 4.13 which uh, lists all these uh, minimum records required from A to V that is 23 different kinds of records. and just uh, each of the components may require multiple formats to capture the data. Uh, alternate method is to go clause wise and as you write the quality manual, you decide if, the, if it requires further detailing in terms of procedure in the level 2, you write that down and make that document and in that itself you decide whether you want to make records. Does this activity need evidence to be captured? That is a question that you would ask at each clause. What evidence? If there is an activity which is happening, is there requirement for an evidence? If so, what evidence? Then you would think, okay, how do I capture that evidence and what are the salience uh, required to capture the evidence which, which I will need as proof. So, if you ask these questions, you understand what formats to make and I will give you a few examples. This is how you decide on the need for a format. So, we have talked about the numbers, understanding the format requirements, the numbers, we have already talked about it. To recap, go by 4.13. Go clause wise starting from 4.1 and as you write your quality manual and see where you need records and make formats, but do not overdo. Do not think that I go oh, the, the more formats I make the, the better the my quality management system is, it is, it is going to be. There is nothing like that, do not overdo your, your format because eventually your technician will be required to fill that up and a lot of unnecessary activity is just going to burden him or her. So, do not overdo. But evidence that is to be shown for audits or any other kind of review meeting, you have to capture. So, that is where your uh, 4.13 is of great value because those are do documents that will be audited. The next is understanding the format requirement design wise. So, that also we already spoke uh, briefly about designing the format, how to capture the required data, understand the purpose of the activity. Okay. Understand the complexity of the activity, uh, never over complicate. So, if there is an activity, what is the minimum proof that you need to show that the activity has been done and the activity has been done as per SOP. That is all, do not over complicate, do not put in elements that will the technician will find difficult to fill up. So, I am going to show you a couple of uh, examples here. So, I am going to draw from a master list or a illustrative list for a master list for level 2 and level 3 document and this is an example of going clause wise that we have described earlier. Okay. Assume that you are looking at 4.4, this is your level 1 document is your quality manual 4.4 and in your level 2 documentation you have a QSP in this list, it is the QSP number 2 of that laboratory. And it is the establishment of review and review of service agreement. You look at 4.4 and see what is it? Service agreements. 4.4 is your service agreement. So, this is the clause we are talking about and it is the establishment and review of service agreement. And this laboratory has listed the second level documents along with the third level documents in the same table and the same, uh, the third level document is here is F. 05, F, F for format, let us assume it is F for format, it could be anything, but it let us assume it is F for format and what is that format for? The format for review of contract. So, what is, what actually is a service agreement and review of contract? These are terms which the standard uses for registration. Service agreement when the patient comes 
and bills for the test or if it is a government uh, hospital, whatever it is, there is an agreement made between the laboratory or the institution and the patient or the user that the service agreement has been made. And assuming there is some breakdown of the machine after you have registered the patient or the technician uh, who generally does the test is not there. So, any reason, for any reason the test cannot be performed, what would you do? You are not supposed to just not do it, you have to make some kind of an alternative arrangement for the patient. You either inform the patient, take his consent and outsource it or you maybe if it is not a test, if it is a very labile analyte and it cannot be outsourced, you tell the patient to come back. So, whatever it is, there is a review, there is a contract and there is a review of contract. That is the meaning of saying this uh, clause number 4.4 establishment of service agreement and under 4.4 you see a sub clause here with 4.4.2 review of service agreement. So, that is what we are talking about. So, you have to the laboratory has to make a format it is required you have to make a format because th these things happen very commonly that you cannot do a test after billing it. So, that you have to keep some kind of a record for this particular review that you have done format and in addition you can also hold other records like if you are going to outsource it bills and photocopies of reports of tests that have been outsourced that is again a documentary evidence that you have outsourced you did not just not perform the test you did not violate your contract despite the problem you have still processed the sample not in your laboratory but from some other laboratory you have you produce the bills and the photocopies for these tests which are outsourced. So, this is again a requirement of the NMBL and this is generally audited uh, during assessments. So, how will you make this format is my question. So, how what evidence will this format have to capture? We are now dwelling on the, the designing of format. So, this activity how can you define the evidence required. So, let us look at the scope of proof this any format will have two components one is a document control element of it which we will not discuss now we will talk about it later and then there is another uh, uh, this area which is capturing the proof of the activity. So, here page date patient's name registration number test under review the test that could not be done for whatever reason reason for review whether it is cancelled or out outsourced has the consent of the patient been taken signature of the quality manager is that is the minimum that you might want to uh, keep as proof of that outsourcing in addition to the photocopies or bills or whatever that you would retain. So, this is how you think through the scope of the proof required for a certain activity. So, any format that you are going to make you have to think it through and decide what is the proof required and put that in the format. Let us look at another example we are going into we saw one in the management requirements we are going to see one in the technical requirement and 5.5 .5. so this is another form the the reference table that you give under the quality manual you are looking at 5.5 5.5 is your examination procedures in the second level the laboratory has four sops you may have one you may have two whatever number and they are saying the first sop is sop of manual essays so manual essays SOP of automated analyzer also requires formatting, but in the manual essay you definitely read formatting for a lot of things. So, report recording of manual essay. So, this is a format F whatever it is and that is for report recording of manual essays. Okay. We will look come to this uh, table later on also to understand uh, some details and then uh, with the printout is for automated essays you have to keep your record. So, you, you can make a table and say what are the things that you will document. I hope uh, you are understanding this concept of making the formats for each activity and so you this is here we need to have a format to capture the uh, result of the manual essay. So, this is a hematology department because there are certain equipment um, books here which are hematology books. So, this is a hematology department with a certain some number of manual essays let us see what that is. So, this is a ESR test record ESR is done manually and it is a ESR test record. This is again the document control element that we will talk about later. This is capturing the data. So, the data capturing requires date, serial number, patient's name 
registration number, reading, comment, signature. Bas, that's all. You don't need to complicate it by br bringing in unnecessary things. The minimum requirement for that thing. This is this kind of a register is there in most laboratories because you have a system of recording the patient uh, results. Only thing that you need to additionally now think about is adding a document control element and most laboratories will capture the test reports adequately. So, this is a very commonly used kind of a format. Just putting here it as an example of 5.5 manual. Similarly, you think about what extra what kind of formats you will require for other aspects of the standard. Another example in 5.3, 5.3 is equipment management and uh, so in that you have got your serial number, breakdown format, breakdown date and time, details of breakdown, has the problem happened earlier, repaired, completed and da with date and time, who attended by who, total amount of downtime. So, these are again the minimum that you would want to capture for an equipment uh, breakdown because uh, now what are the things, what is the breakdown, when did the breakdown happen, important, details of breakdown, how did it break down and what are, what is the specifics of it and also has it happened earlier, very important question to ask, if it is a repeated problem you know where to go and troubleshoot, repair date completed, how much of time did the uh, the vendor take to come and fix the problem and who attended it and it was it uh, how much of downtime is it was it acceptable for your lab to have that kind of a downtime. So, you gather a lot of information by formatting it in a, in a way like this again there is nothing fixed about it you are uh, you can uh, do whichever way as long as you capture the information that you require through the formats. Some basic points in controlling we are going to talk about document control in the in the next session. Um, so, uh, controlling minimum something we will talk about very, very, very minimum requirements now all formats should be indexed and numbered. Indexing is the document number and the document name, we will talk about it later and all formats should be traceable to the second level of documents where the activity is described. That is very clear in this one in all these uh, activity that is the second level of documents are described and the formats are described in from the second level. So, the traceability can be demonstrated if you make that kind of a chart where you are under you are um, tabulating uh, your clause from level 1, SOPs or QSPs from level 2 and your formats from level 3 and records also if it they are external records that you want to store separately it is also fine if you have another numbering system it is fine however you hold it it is fine but it should be traceable all formats should be traceable to the second level of documents where the activity is described ok. And the formats come under, come under document control. Again we have seen a few examples, we will see more of it. If a format requires reformatting to capture additional information, note down the reason for revision, rate, revision number, we will talk about all these things. All in use formats should be control stamped, very important and obsolete format should be removed from the site of use and one copy of the obsolete format should be used for reference and uh, that should be stamped with the obsolete stamp. Why do you want to keep that? So, because at some point later on you would want to, you would wonder why did you make that amendment, why did you obsolete it and what um, area of uh, the activity was it not capturing or was it too complicated for the technician to fill in. So, for what reason did I change it? So, one copy of anything that you obsolete whether it is format or whether it is your uh, um, your QSPs or SOPs, it is always good to keep one copy because you will then later on you can understand why you have obsoleted it. Yeah. The next uh, concept here is uh, record retention. So, under the records we talked about uh, many things, it could be repetition for you, but just to remember we talked about the number of records required uh, uh, as per 4.13 or as per clause, however you would want to enumerate them. Then we talked about the design of the, each of the formats as per the activity that needs to be captured. We also talked about the controlling of uh, formats, details of which we will soon see later. And also the now the next point that we have to talk about is the retention of the records uh, retained. Re document retention is mostly within the control of the laboratory though NABL also has document retention, but whereas uh, record retention is concerned you need to be also be mindful of the regulatory requirements because some of the records may need regulatory compliance to their uh, storage time like for instance the biomedical waste uh, 
management records and all you have to comply with the pollution control board's requirements of your retention of records apart from that uh, it's uh, retention of record is mandatory to track specific activities laboratory shall decide the retention time of records as per the national regional and local regulations duration of retention depends on the scope of the activity and some examples are like that's again some, some of it is just common sense there is nobody telling you how much to retain like he, hr files or personal files you would want to retain as long as that person is in service similarly equipment files you would want to retain as long as equipment is in service is in use and uh, quality control files it's good to retain them at least for a year uh, at least from one audit to the next audit external control external equas program files hold it for at least a couple of years so that you can look at your trends and all in uh, retrospect also complaints the laboratory has to make a decision on how long the complaints will complaint forms will be uh, retained management review meetings adverse incidents it's good to have longer retention period for these things and we'll look at some of the recommendations made by nabl quality technical records uh, particle cell counter data for one week molecular diagnostic gel pictures for 5 years flow cytometry immunophenotyping for 6 months hemoglobin hplc data one year whatever it is you you can decide on how you would want to uh, store you can take guidelines from the nabl also make your own guidelines but if nabl is saying the certain gel is to be stored for this that a certain period of time that has to be complied to because that will be audited Uh, while NABL is coming for assessment, so this is a EQUAS report. How much will you store it? It's your call. I would suggest at least two years. This is a particle counting data, cell counter data. NABL says one week. I would think that's good enough to keep the record for one week. And one more thing before we com- conclude uh, the talk about uh, records is to uh, understand the. that the reports are also record patient reports are also records and so whatever you are doing for your uh, uh, other records you should also understand you have to do it for uh, the reports also and the report attributes are listed in 5.8.3 of the standard you you can refer to that and there are multiple elements of that the standard suggests should be part of your record and i would advise all um, the listeners to look at 5.8.3 and understand the the aspects of each of these elements uh, so that your and formatize again that that requires uh, for records you while you make the formats for record uh, for your reports you comply with 5.8.3 and if you want to understand more about uh, um, the what each of these subclasses mean you can please may refer to the uh, post analytical best practices module which is also uploaded on this website now before we conclude let us look at uh, uh, the entire concept of documentation once again uh, we we'll, we we'll have one more session on document control but this the 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 number of documents we have already started with we started with the level 1 and we have come down the entire pyramid we have talked about level 1 the documents in that level 2 the documents in that and we have talked about the level 3 the formats and the records and how to make each one of those and i hope it has been useful for you and um, before we conclude let's just recap in the in through this uh, flow chart so the flow is for the policy which was a statement of intent to the process which defines activities that transform the intent into action remember the pyramid remember the tree here processes are activities that transform the intent into action and procedure is actual performance of the activity and records are the evidence retained now let us ca- go backwards the what is the captured evidence of an activity the evidence that is captured on prescribed formats will be satisfying defined task or the sop or the qsp whichever has defined it the evidence is captured on your format and that captures that def- satisfies what has been written on your sops or your qsps which in turn is producing the desired outcome which is the process and which in turn is enabling the laboratory to achieve the policy which has been defined so i I, see, I, just, I hope that you understand the flow of 
information this is your dissemination of information and this is how you trace it back okay the information starts with the policy processes goes becomes the procedures and evidence is retained as records and backwards captured evidence will satisfy the sop which will in turn will side outcome which will enable the laboratory to achieve the policy so this is the quality management documentation quality management qms documentation that we are talking about and before we conclude let us look at this pdca cycle we have talked about the pdca earlier on in the planning documentation so we are going to now reiterate once again all the documents that has become part of this pdca cycle so you look at uh, this demonstration we are going to start with the planning documents plan pdca for plan do check act planning documents which are the quality policy quality objectives indicators and the quality manual which is now defined by the upper management and upper management after defining the policies transfers the responsibility to the technical supervisory team who in turn will start off with the doing document so the first level is a planning document after planning document the technical supervisory team will now start making the doing documents which will be the instructional documents which are your qsps and sops of course the bench aids and then that will become the next level will be the having done it those documents which is your capturing evidence which will be your formats and records and together they are the doing documents so you have covered the plan phase through the planning documents do phase through the procedure documents planning through the once again policy documents planning instructions and doing documents through the procedures and now that your documentation is complete somebody has to check it what are the checking processes checking is done by again the standard defines a checking by technical teams and the management teams the management team may review it on certain fixed frequencies maybe couple of times a year maybe four times a year per quarter management reviews meetings at least once a year and the technical teams will be supervising much more often some of the components will have to be reviewed maybe weekly some may be monthly some components may have to be reviewed daily and this kind of review continuously happens because you have got all activities captured and therefore the review of the records will be done by both the management and technical teams so we have covered plan do and check and finally the act act happens when again the documents are checked and the management or the technical supervisory team will say we have to review our objectives we have to review maybe the policy because we have some more bottlenecks in this area or that area and accordingly you review and you act on it and you go back to the plan phase so that is the pdca cycle and the pdca cycle as a diagram implies does not happen on level ground it is a constant improvement process plan do check act by the standard and you keep moving upwards on level ground you have to keep going upwards quality is a goal without end and the quality improvement is an incremental process it goes up over a period of time because you are using the pdca by enabling the quality management system and incremental improvements are happening and this is called the continual improvement as per the iso 15189 standard i hope with now you understand why the documented quality management system is very important and how the documented quality management system not only holds all those processes together do you remember the watch analogy at the beginning of the first video the watch analogy is like a clockwork the lab also has to become clockwork but and but the laboratory is not a mechanical place it's it involves a lot of people a lot of uh, processes so therefore to make it very compliant to all the, almost like a clockwork thing with in compliance with the standard the enabling of the quality management system that to a quality documented quality management system is essential that's what we have been trying to talk about through these videos thank you for listening and i hope you will start your documentation process in your laboratories